In my talk today, there will be two parts. The first one, I'd like to give a brief introduction of my institute. The second, I'd like to introduce the uh, resources in our institute. So, uh, this, uh, our institute belongs to the camps. CAMP is the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences, and it was founded in 1956. And the PMS is the Peking Uni Medical College. It was founded in 1917, sponsored by the Rock Taylor Foundation of America. So since the camps were founded in 1956, these two joined as one. So in the in the camps and PMC, there are 28 academicians, uh, more than 1,000 uh, PI, and more than 20,000 staff and postgraduates. So this is the uh, the state level academic uh, center for medical science in China. And in 2016, when we have the 60th anniversary of camps, uh, the president is thinking. Uh, he sent a message to us that he pointed out to build the camps into the core base of uh, in China to be the medical uh, science and technology innovation center. So we are working very hard to that goal. Uh, and our institute was founded in 1980, and it is a comprehensive institute for the education and uh, 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 leverage animal resources generation and the training and also the technical service. And our institute since the day was founded is leading the development of leverage animal science in China. And we have uh, nearly 300 staff, uh, including over 50 senior scientists on different uh, uh, fields for example, medicine, veterinary, pathology, microbiology, and so on. And uh, we have educated more than 200 postgraduates and 15 postdocs. And every year, we run, uh, we, we got the budget from the government around 150 million RMB. And uh, we carry out around uh, 60 programs per year and produce around 100 scientific papers. And mainly research fields in our uh, institute uh, are the laboratory animal sciences and the competitive medicine. So in the laboratory animal sciences, we establish the uh, laboratory animal resources and breeding for that. And of course, it's, it's very important to monitor the quality of the laboratory animal in this field. So this is the second part in this field. And in this comparative medicine, so uh, since we belong to the medical sciences, so we basically, we generate the uh, animal, uh, the human disease animal models. And based on these models, we do the competitive medicine analysis and we supply the information to the researchers. So our institute belongs to many the international organizations. Uh, we are the co-founder of Asia Mouse Move Genesis and Resource Association and also the Asian Federation of Leverage Animal Association. And we also are the scientific member of the International Council for Leverage Animal Sciences. And also we have established the Human Disease Animal Model Resource Center of CAMPS. And hopefully next to the ANRRC. And uh, there are five research centers in the Institute. The Leverage Animal Resource Center and Compact Medicine Center Pathogen Experimental Research Center, Translational Medical uh, Medicine Center, and Modern Chinese Medicine Research Center. So in the first center, uh, we focus on the resources. So the different groups, they are uh, through the breeding or the genetic engineering techniques. They generate different uh, models. And of course, another is the special uh, species, uh, for example, the non-human primates. 
And uh, later I urge, uh, introduce another resource, which is a uh, special uh, uh, resource in China. And in the Compatible Medicine Center, we, uh, we uh, divided different groups according to different diseases. And in this one is all for the working on the infectious diseases. And uh, in the tra translational medicine, for example, in the patient derived demographs, and also intestinal, uh, the flora and disease, and also stem cells uh, uh, growth. They'll uh, generate different uh, stem cells with different tissues and apply that to the human uh, disease animal models. And the last one is the Modern Chinese Medical Research Center. So in this center, they um, mimic the uh, genetic animal models to mimic the traditional Chinese medicine syndrome. So basically, this is the a framework of our institute. It's like a hospital. So we have a patient, they are the uh, animal models. So in the next part, I'd like to introduce the resources in our institute. See, we have uh, these uh, animal models related to nervous system disease. There are more than 100 strains. And also have the related with the cardiovascular diseases, and metabolic disease, and tumor-related diseases. So uh, mostly are related with the different diseases. And we also have the, this genetic diversity mind resources. This can mimic our uh, population, the complex uh, genetic background, and also different uh, species. So uh, in total, we have uh, one, more than 1,000 uh, human disease models. Uh, we, uh, we are actually only for the human disease animal models, we are the largest a platform in China. And here are some special diseases I'd like to introduce to you. The first one, genetic, genetic diversity mice resources. So why so? For our uh, human beings, we have very complex backgrounds. But in the laboratory, we generally use the inbred strains. Inbred means they have very clear background. They have the, the actually very simple background. Each individual of the mice, they are the same. But for our human beings, we are not like this. So we have, for the same diseases, we have different vulnerability, and we have different symptoms. And for the same medicine, the treatment, they have different efficacy and different side effects. So in this case, he has to find a new models to mimic the complex uh, situation of the population. So what we did was we we have uh, we have selected eight strains of the commonly used mice in the lab from more than 100 strains. So these eight strains they have completely different background. So these strings they collaborate across with each other. So so after twenty generations, we can call it inbred strings. So technically they are unlimited strings, but because the inbred problem, so we now we have sixty-eight strings of these resources. So in the same treatment. We can see that different strains, they have very different phenotype, just like our human beings. So with this uh, resource, we can apply a lot of uh, vulnerability uh, seeds. And the second part is the patient-derived xenographs. For these models, we have the uh, patient tumor uh, tissue, the fresh one, we transplant into the immune deficient mice and we passage these uh, samples through the mice. And these uh, this mice 
Basel is a form of the uh, kind of platform. This one can be used for drug selection. So, so far, these PDX models are the most ideal models for anti-cancer drug selection or even for the uh, precision medicine. So each, uh, each uh, mice, they can be they are considered as avatar of the patient. So this can be used for the uh, drug selection, uh, even uh, for, uh, and for also biomarker uh, selection. So we, other PDX models basically focus on the uh, gastric intestine though. So they have the esophagus, gastric, colorectal, liver, pancreas. We have nearly 400 cases that which means we are probably the number one in the world. So this is a part of the infectious diseases. So in this one, we have different uh, animal models related with AIDS, influenza, TB, MERS, uh, Ebola, Zika. So over the, uh, in the AIDS group, they have generated this SIV research models. This model was considered <coughs> as the golden model for AIDS research. And for influenza, they have also generated different species animal models. <coughs> Actually, they have tried many uh, different species. For example, this uh, RAS. There's no risk symptom of RAS. So RAS is not a good uh, model for influenza research. And this is a P, and uh, not in a premise even. But finally, after the operation with different species, they figure out that the ferret is the best model for influenza research. Because the, the receptor of the virus, they, ha they have the similar uh, structure of human beings that makes them, uh, the ferret have the obvious symptoms uh, very similar with human beings. So, so far they have more than 30 uh, kinds of characteristic experimental animal species, including ferrets, mammals, mammals that, very monkey, brambles, chinchilla, and so on. And for TB, this uh, this uh, animal uh, models they also have generated on the mice, GDP, not human primates, and tissue to uh, to show the different uh, uh, symptom of the animal model have mimicked for human uh, human disease and. Uh, and this one of uh, coronavirus models, they, since 2003, when the SARS uh, appeared in China, and we established the first animal model to uh, evaluate the uh, vaccine. And MERS, in 2013, we also generated the first animal model in the world, which helped uh, to the Chinese scientists uh, to do the research and to evaluate the medicines. <coughs> and uh, after Pisces, we have the mouse and woodchuck animal models. And for woodchuck, it can be infected by the woodchuck uh, the virus. But it has a very similar uh, uh, pa uh, pathological characteristics when it developed to the hepatitis very similar to human beings. So the woodchuck is considered as the ideal, ideal uh, animal models for the uh, hepatitis research. And this one is very interesting also. The, we know that so many people every day waiting for the organ transplantation, but the shortage of the organ donor make every day many people die during waiting. So, so actually now many scientists uh, they are working on this. They, they generate, uh, we all consider it pig as a very uh, nice donor for the uh, organ uh, transplantation. 
However, the, the, uh, the pig has one gene that called GGTA1. This, this gene can cause the hyper acute rejection. So in our institute, they have blocked out this gene from this pig. So that will make uh, this, uh, this pig could be a nice, uh, a very good organ donor for transplantation. And that I believe that many other institutes also have done this work. Uh, this means that we not only we have this kind of pig, we also have the, we are capable to do this, uh, uh, to establish this platform to uh, further uh, pursue this uh, technique. And also, this is very hard part of this, the germ-free animals. So germ-free is that they become, uh, there's no any uh, bacteria, virus, nothing can be detected so far. So this is called germ-free. And the second part is that you have put certain bacteria or virus into the germ-free uh, the animals. This is called this, the GMP. For example, you put HP or virus into the, into the germ-free animals. And also, of course, the human blood associated animals. <coughs> and this part is that we have uh, generated the stem cells from different tissues of animals and also human beings. And with this uh, uh, stem cells, we they apply this to the animal models we have, we have tried to, to cure these diseases. And we have the, the list of the uh, stem cells. And this is the, the, uh, the view of the, you can see that what they have generated. They have the, uh, the very detailed information of the, uh, each uh, stem cells. Where are they from? And which days? And what's the condition of culture? And the, the even the, the they stand with different markers. And here is the details of uh, uh, our uh, animal models resource. Unfortunately, this is in Chinese. And uh, they're working on that, and hopefully by the end of the year, they have the new website you can search uh, with English. And this one is for the uh, rat resource database. This is special for rat, and they are all the uh, genetic engineering rat. And here, they, in the, uh, the first thing, the Chinese, but if you, if you search, if you search inside, all the information is in English. So, and of course, the, for the uh, laboratory animal science, since they are also nice, so we need the, the accreditation. So we are accredited by the ALAC International. And also, we have the animal biosafety level three labs to perform the infectious uh, uh, research, disease research, and also the animal uh, quality monitoring, all uh, certified by the SINAS. And all the uh, resources in our institute, we are, we are open for the collaboration and exchange. So, so in summary, our uh, institute, we first generate the animal models and we focus on the human disease animal models and we perform the competitive maps analysis and we supply the information to the research inside or outside our institute. And that's all, thank you very much. <laughs>